Welcome to the Ericsson 2018 OSS BSS User Group. I'm Des Blanchfield and he, we're here in New York and I have the pleasure of being joined by Viraj Parekh. Hi Viraj, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for making time to uh, catch up with me on camera. Thank you. Um, so, uh, before we get into some of the big topics I want to cover around what's happening at the event and what we can look forward to and some of the key takeaways and so forth, uh, would you maybe just quickly introduce yourself and your role within the Verizon team? Absolutely. Uh, well, my name is Viraj Parekh. I uh, am the executive director heading the product uh, management, product development organization for our virtualized network services, our managed services, and I also have the, uh, the resale portfolio for Verizon. Fantastic, you've got both ends of the spectrum, then developing the products, managing through the process, and then getting them out to the market. Absolutely. Well, then I'm going to get some great insights uh, on that space. Uh, we've got a couple of exciting days ahead of us at the start of the event. Mm -hmm. uh, from your personal point of view, what are the big things that you're looking for at this event, uh, as far as you know, some of the key key things that are standing out, whether it's a panel or, or a plenary session or a keynote? Uh, what are you personally sort of looking to get from this whole event? What are the big topics that people should be thinking about and looking for? Absolutely. Uh, I, so this is a very unique opportunity where I, all the carriers are coming under one roof and mm -hmm. uh, working side by side, talking about challenges they're having, talking about the future. And I think this is a time, especially right now, where the network is going through a massive transformation in the industry. Yes. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's very important for uh, us carriers and operators to understand uh, what the other carriers and operators are doing in the space as well, especially when there's so much innovation happening right now. Uh, there's also, a, along with innovation, there are a lot of the, the partner ecosystem, the vendor ecosystem, has become quite complex as well in terms of capabilities right. and things they bring to market. So, you know, sometimes it, it, it is a challenge for us to maneuver through the, the, the ecosystem and understand what are the solutions and products and how do we essentially take it to the market. And I think uh, just working with a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of uh, our partners uh, in in, uh, in terms of the carriers and operators over here uh, is, is going to definitely be very beneficial. And you know, at the end of the day, uh, we deliver end-to-end uh, -end global uh, services to our customers and we cannot be successful without uh, having that right partnership with the other operators in the market as well. Uh, and uh, and it becomes more and more essential where, especially with, so with the evolution of software-defined networking, uh, how we can become more agile and more real-time to really ultimately deliver in real-time enterprise. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple of things that jumped out at me there uh, just to touch on them again. I mean, is it fair to say that these days uh, the enterprise clients that you're working with, they almost want this whole everything as a service thing we talk about um, uh, in so many other aspects. Uh, now telco, and particularly with the cloudification of everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, business support systems and orchestration systems that effectively they can be self-service, they can instantiate it and use it when they want, pay for it and then kill it and go away. That, that's almost the cloud model for telco. Um, with that in mind, what what are some of the big key drivers you're you're seeing from some of your clients in the conversation you're having? What, what are the drivers that are bringing them to you to say, look, we're we're a bank, we're a transport company, we're an aviation company, whatever the case may be. We don't want to be a carrier. We used to manage some of our network infrastructure. Come and help us. What sort of key drivers are you you seeing coming out of the woodwork now with the exciting capabilities at 5G and all of the things that come with that to uh, allow them to think about now and talk to you about? Right. No, that's a great question. So. Uh Definitely, we're seeing a, a pretty significant shift in, in, in how the enterprises are essentially leveraging their networks now, right? With the evolution of mobility, cloud, uh, you know, applications pretty much in multi-cloud ecosystems, mm -hmm. multi-data center ecosystems, users being more mobile, even the application behaviors like, you know, you're talking about more uh, multimedia, uh, more video type services, yeah. uh, you know, the, the utilization we're seeing. 40% uh, increase year over year in terms of bandwidth utilization. So wow. uh, the CIOs are definitely feeling the challenge. Before previously, uh, uh, you know, the client, the applications are a little more simplistic, more yeah. client server. Yeah. You could manage, you could plan your networking needs around it. But now with a complex, more complex application ecosystem, it's become a lot more uh, uh, challenging for CIOs to plan their network needs, their security needs. Uh, around it as well, uh, so that, that's mm. been one of the big biggest drivers. So the way we we approached it is one as a as a foundation, right? We we needed to ensure that we connect the users to the application in a simple, secure, and reliable way, right? But not only just that, we need to do, in, in, in able to do that. We need to deliver a more faster and better network. And what that means is more in the terms of how, how do I give more optionality for my customers, where they can essentially pick and choose. Uh, the right solution catering to their specific needs and requirements, right? Uh, you want to create a more personalized customer experience for, for our customers. 
Uh, the second one is faster, faster from the standpoint, how do I speed up my deployment uh, right. uh, times? How do I speed up my network? Uh, uh, these are all uh, challenges that customers want to directly head on address, right? Because they, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, the speed we're seeing, I'll take an example. It took, what, about 38 years for uh, radio to create th 50 million subscribers. Yeah. And it's taken 17 days for Pokemon Go to have 50 million users. <laughs> it's just mind-boggling, isn't it? It's mind-boggling, exactly. And that's the speed at which our enterprise want to work. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, faster becomes important. And then better, better in terms of performance, in terms of security. Security needs to be inherently part of network. Yeah. Uh, so these are things that we are directly addressing. But as I said, from the user to application. So now we have to really care for that end-to-end and ecosystem, yeah. right? So effectively now uh, having network functions and capabilities at the customer edge, which is closest to the user, uh, within the network ecosystem, which is the network we provide, mm -hmm. and then closer to the data center uh, where the applications reside. So being able to provide uh, in a ubiquitous way, in a more seamless way, where we can deploy services uh, across that entire uh, chain over there yeah. and that's where essentially uh, we we started working with our network power vendors to virtualize the network functions because mm -hmm. soft the speed of software means mm -hmm. we can actually mm -hmm. deploy these services a lot more faster and quicker and then ericsson essentially came in and supported us from a full automation of that end-to-end -end deployment but not just that but also providing closed loop behavior how can we become true cloud-like how can we became become more web scale uh, yeah like yeah. also in the network space and i think that's the partnership which has really benefited and yielded a lot of results for us. And yeah, it's an exciting that. relationship and, and, and for those of us watching it, uh, I guess from the sidelines instead of being inside the boardrooms, uh, one of the interesting things that struck me was that you've become your own customer as customer number one, right? Yeah. You're effectively building and designing and developing the stuff with partners and particularly with Ericsson and then consuming it yourself in many ways, you know, Absolutely. And, and then taking it to the market, which I think is quite exciting because then the sales pitch yeah. to goes, well, we use it, you know, it yeah. works. Um, really keen to get your thoughts on, uh, before we wrap up, big trends that are coming up. I mean, there's a number of big things. I mean, software-defined networking, network function virtualization, software-defined wireless LAN, there's a network infrastructure around it that's cloudified now, cybersecurity risks, unified comms, and you know, the whole, everything is a service thing. Where do you see the big, biggest shifts? I mean, if we were sort of looking at you know, 12 to 18 months down the path, I mean, I know it's a bit of crystal ball gazing, but what's your general sense of the, the big things? You know, is it autonomous vehicles, IoT, uh, or, or is it a blend of everything? You know, the, What's your general it's sense all, of the big things that are coming at us? Yeah, it's, it's all of the above, right? I mean, right, uh, it, right now, the, 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 again, the speed at which uh, things are happening within, uh, within the whole uh, landscape of uh, with 5G and with IoT and you know, mobile edge computing and uh, network slicing and the technology mm -hmm. trends that are happening in the industry, AI, ML is definitely driving numerous use cases, mm -hmm. use cases that we haven't even potentially imagined. We're just literally scratching the... Uh, uh, yeah, surface and we are li we are at the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution and I strongly believe that uh, but having said that right one important aspect that we want to be we want to ensure we are focused on is ultimately it, it boils down to the the outcome we drive for our right. uh, customers mm -hmm. and and from an outcome standpoint what, what becomes important is uh, are we essentially driving the ability for cust the customers to be able to program the solution and services we give to them to cater to their specific outcomes, right? Whether it's in AR, VR, or it's in IoT, or whatever specific outcomes right. related to that we are trying to drive. And as a result of that, visibility becomes very important. And that's one of the investments we've been making is ensuring that we have full end-to-end, -end, not just network visibility, but application visibility okay. and driving analytics on top of that. So we understand and use that information as part of our closed loop behavior. Closed loop behavior is just not about, hey, my network function failed and I'm just going to re-spin it up, but it's a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. How can I become more more autonomous uh, with regards to driving that behavior? And I think that's, uh, that's one aspect, but layering on top of that, if you think about it, right, uh, it, it's more about how do I make it more programmable for the customer? And and the customer doesn't need to understand the sophistication of mm -hmm. what's underneath. He needs to be able to s describe his intent. This is what I want to do. I want uh, I want to deploy a new application. And then right. this has this specific needs and requirements and push it through into the system so it's automatically taken care of. It hits the right policy buckets. It has the right service levels yep. associated with it has the right security uh, characteristics associated with it, and that's ultimately what we're looking to drive uh, from an outcome standpoint. 
Uh, final question, if I can then. Uh, if you were going to give uh, some, I guess, some, some talking points to uh, some of the enterprise decision makers out there, whether it's in the boardroom, the C-suite, uh, or the CISOs, CTOs, CEOs, uh, what kind of uh, advice could you offer them or other things to start thinking about, start planning for? You know, in the next 12 to 18 months, all of those things you were just talking about are very big, high impact, potentially high risk, but if they're managed right. Uh, if I was one of your enterprise clients, what kind of thing would you sort of advise me to say, you know, start having a conversation in the organization now about this, start looking at this path. What do those conversations look like? What are the two to three sort of key things that you would advise folk to sort of think about before they come and meet with you and say, we are a bank and we need this, or we're a logistics transport company, we're thinking about this. Are there key talking points that they sort of start about, or is it just a case of just get started? Oh, no, I, no, that, uh, I, I mean, look, I, to me, at the end of the day, it's again, it boils down to what what, what outcome you're going to influence right. for your, for your uh, and if you're looking to go down the path of a digital transformation to drive a specific outcome for your industry, you need to first start thinking about what I like to say core versus chore, right? Okay. It's important that you know you focus on what your core uh, needs and requirements are, right? Uh, versus trying to, uh, you know, versus with, with regards to specific uh, uh, underlying activities to support that uh, core function, mm. rely on partners and service providers and operators uh, out there in the market. Uh, but beyond that also, right, if, if uh, you know, uh, the three things I like to say is, uh, innovate right all uh, there's an opportunity to yeah. go innovate with your partners and vendors right so take that opportunity invest if you do not invest right now mm -hmm. uh, you know there is this is a long journey right so the, you know you got to start investing right now to essentially help you realize that uh, you know goal that you're working towards uh, and influence right you know enterprise customers are a strong voice uh, okay. you know all the future use cases including 5g the enterprise use cases are becoming are, are essentially driving a big portion of the revenue po uh, potential over there mm. so they enterprises do have a voice and use that influence to drive your partner ecosystem towards the right solutions right um, I think these are the key points but uh, just to uh, uh, mm. some uh, you know to kind of close it out right uh, I think there was there was somebody had said that hey uh, digital transformation is like a yeah, if you don't uh, if you don't get it uh, if you get it right, it's like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. Right. But if you don't get it right, it's like a cater. Uh, you just all you have is a much faster caterpillar. That's all. <laughs> I like right? that. So uh, you know, yeah, I think yeah. that's that's an important focus and network is a key part of that digital mm -hmm. transformation journey. And that's what I would like the enterprise and their CIOs, the C levels, to really uh, understand and own in on that. Fantastic. Well, some great advice and great insights, and thank you so much for making time to uh, catch up with me. I really appreciate it, and congratulations on an exciting event. And uh, look forward to uh, what's going to come out of the Verizon and uh, Ericsson partnership over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, because uh, there's already an exciting series of things that are coming out currently. No. Appreciate your time. Well, thank, thank you, folks. We appreciate you joining us. We'll wrap up there. I'm Des Blanchfield, and we are at the uh, Ericsson 2018 OSS BSS User Group, uh, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.